I thank the member for Gosling and I for Solomon and I call the member for Sturman. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. As did the Minister when he provided his statement, I begin by acknowledging in this place all those who have served in the Australian Defence Force and their families, including the members for Solomon and Herbert, who are here in the room today. I acknowledge also those servicemen and women and their families across Australia on this day. I'm delighted to speak on this third annual statement of veterans and their families. <clears throat> And I feel uniquely qualified in this space <clears throat> because both myself and my wife, Peter, are both veterans <clears throat> and we have three children, two of whom were born whilst we were still both serving in the Australian Regular Army. So to help illuminate some of the challenges that families face, I thought I'd start by sharing a personal story. In our first year of married life, my wife, Peter, and I spent a grand total of nine weeks together which brought its own challenges, although one upside was we reckon that every time we did see each other was a bit like another honeymoon. Moving forward into the following year, we, uh, we somehow managed to still fall pregnant with, uh, with what became our first child, uh, and we were posted to Darwin. And in that same year, I was posted as a young platoon commander across to East Timor. Uh, whilst I was away on that posting, in uh, deployment, I should say, to East Timor, we were posted to Townsville, which meant that whilst I was away, my eight-month pregnant wife needed to move in the Darwin uh, tropical heat uh, on, her, on her own with no family support from Darwin to Townsville. Um, now, when Peter got to Townsville and was busily put, carrying boxes down to the storage room, storage room underneath our our, uh, our unit, our accommodation, which I still hadn't seen, there was a storm that came through and the basement area flooded, which meant that all our boxes of clothing and, and all the baby clothing that was there in preparation was all flooded and ruined. So there's my wife, eight months pregnant, now stifling Townsville heat, having just moved our, our house by herself, dealing with an insurance claim and about to have our first child. Two weeks later, it was Christmas Eve, and there's Peter sitting in the midnight mass in the, uh, in the church there in Townsville and starts having contractions. So of course, races out to the hospital and uh, bears our first child on Christmas Day. Uh, my mother-in-law just made it across in time from Perth to Townsville in, uh, in order to, uh, to, to cut the cable ceremoniously with me, <coughs> with, uh, with me on the end of a sat phone on the border between Indonesia and East Timor. So look, I mean, that's just one, uh, one story and, and, and I thought I'd never be forgiven for that either, but uh, funnily enough, I, I was forgiven and I get in more trouble nowadays for forgetting to unpack the dishwasher. So thankfully we did recover. Uh, and I just thought I'd share that. It's only one story of a great many of, in fact, tens of thousands of, of challenging stories that occur every day where veterans and their husbands, wives, partners and, of course, children are managing through complexity uh, and, and challenging circumstances. So let me touch now on another very important uh, issue to veterans and their families, which is that circumstances of transition, because, of course, just as enlistment and basic training are important in the ADF, transition, transition back into civilian life is extremely important. Every year, five and a half thousand people transition out of defence and back into civilian life. And that's why this government is investing so heavily in transition support. So that regardless of the time that a member has served, members can now access coaching, including career planning, full service documentation, skills recognition and resume preparation, as well as job search program and financial literacy education. It's important to note that it's not just the government who are supporting veterans and their families during transition. There are some amazing organisations who are also providing support. One of those is the Veterans Transition Centre in Jarrodale in my home state of Western Australia and in the electorate of Canning. Situated, situated in a natural bush settle, set setting nestled in the Darling Ranges 
on about 42 acres. This is only 45 minutes from the CBD of Perth, but provides an amazing bush retreat for veterans and their families. Here, there are 20 A-frame log cabins. There's a communal hall, a kitchen area, a barbecue facilities and an outdoor fire area. A place where veterans and their families can visit for planned as well as unplanned activities. I was really pleased that Minister Chester visited just Friday a week ago and was also able to see firsthand one of the activities that was underway. And this activity was being conducted by an organisation called Younger Heroes. Younger Heroes' mission is to strengthen families. The Younger Heroes is a three-day physical and psychological training camp designed to reconnect veterans and those who have served the nation with their children, to build resilience in those relationships through shared effort and open communications. So I was really pleased that my wife Peter and our three children were also participants on this Younger Heroes camp. So it was quite timely having both the minister and my wife and three kids all, all there on the same, same day. Uh, but I just wanted to say that uh, my wife reported back to me afterwards that it was an amazing experience, you know, being there with our three now teenage children, just reconnecting in that bush setting with some planned and unplanned activities along with other veterans and their kids. <laughs> thank you, thank you. She does have it indeed. So look, uh, there's some of the some of the wonderful things that are happening in the transition space, as I said, some driven by government, some taken up by the passion that others share to support veterans and their families. Let me touch briefly also on employment. And the <coughs> member for Solomon very rightly pointed out, as did the minister, that so many, in fact, the vast majority of our, of our veterans leave defence happy, healthy, and with an amazing set of skills. Now, when they transition into civilian life, these skills can be brought to bear for the success of business organisations. And smart Australian businesses realise this and they hire ex-ADF men and women to access their unmatched experience and skills in leadership, in discipline and, of course, in successful teamwork. Today, I call on all Australian employers, employers to take the lead from other great organisations, including my own former employer, Woodside Petroleum, and tap into the veteran skill pool. To conclude, this government is committed to caring for those who have served our country as well as their loved ones. And all Australians can be rightly proud that the government spends more than $11.5 billion a year to support veterans and their families. I look forward to continuing to advocate for and support our veterans and their families, for all of whom we remain incredibly grateful and proud. I thank the member for Stirling and I